so this is the inaugural episode of Who You Got, where we go on BaseballReference.com and play their little game of voting on which player is better based on their career stats. And the first Who You Got up is... I should probably introduce everybody. That would help, actually. That that you just saw is Zach Grimm. What's going on, everybody? I'm glad to be here with TJ Lowerman for Who You Got. And Jeff Sherman. What's going on? So we're going to kick it off with the first Who You Got between Bartolo Colon or Tim Lincecum. Do I have to pick this? I mean, they're both pretty crappy as we stand right now. I think it's a pretty tough one. Linscombe's having a bad year, but he has won. He's won Cy Young, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. If not two. If not two. Uh, I give the nod to Linscombe only because, I mean, he's got an ERA that's almost a point lower, and I think that you know he's he's got the hardware. Yeah, see, now, this is one of those ones where we're going to have to do it based on where we think Linscombe's going to be, because Cologne's got him by twice as many games. And True, but, I mean, just just having twice as many games doesn't automatically make you a better player. I mean, you know, there are, there are guys out there who spent 20 years in the majors, but they're not as good as people who spent seven years in the majors if those seven years were that much better. I mean, if you're going to take a game seven, Cologne in his prime, Linscombe in his prime, who do you want? Honestly, in his prime, I'm taking Bartolo Cologne. You say Cologne on the Indians is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Even that one year where he had like 22 wins with the Angels was pretty good. Yeah, I got to go Cologne too. But the travesty is that it says that his weight is 265. It's <laughs> obviously a lie. <laughs> it's 265 in 2004. True. The beauty of who you got is the random matchups that you're going to get. Uh, people who probably were never good. Now, when they compare them, are we getting position players against position players, or can there be like a pitcher against the second baseman? Uh, I think it's only position players versus position players yeah. and pitcher versus pitcher. They're trying to keep it comparable. I was about to say, because it would be very hard to compare Tim Lincecum to, I don't know, Ryan Sandberg or some, you know, right. matchup like that. I think the best one I've seen was Orlando Hudson versus Orlando Cabrera. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a tough decision. Well, I think this next one's going to be pretty easy. All right, let's see. Oh, wow. It is Elvis Andrews versus Chris Iannetta. How has Ionetta been in the league for seven years? Because he's just that good. I don't know what you're talking about. No, for me, it's Elvis Andrews. I think that's a pretty clear cut. Yeah. I, know that he, I know he's only been in the, the league, what, three years now? Maybe four? Four. They have the same amount of games, and, I mean, Ionetta's hitting 233. Granted, he's a catcher defensive, but uh, Andrews is definitely... For me. No, yeah, I, mean, I, ref I refuse to give it to someone hitting 230. <laughs> and I refuse to find my video. I refuse to pick Ionetta because I couldn't pick him out of a lineup if he showed it me four other white baseball players. I think when, when you've got a guy who like Elvis Andrews who's been at the top of his position through all of the major leagues, even in just four years, I think that that's right there. I think that that's where, where you pick him straight away. Woohoo, I'm back. All right, so I guess we're all going Elvis Andrews. Mm, never heard of either of these guys. I think even if you've never heard of them, we have to pick based on name alone. It's interesting. Well, now we're going to go into uh, the pitcher's area on this one with a toss-up between... Ramon Ortiz or Nate Robertson? Oh, that's a tough one because they're both uh, not great. That's an understatement. 
I mean, Robertson has a save, but for me, I one's a 500 pitcher, one's not a 500 pitcher. But Nate Robertson rocked Oakley's on the mound. True. That was pretty cool. He was also a guy that when he came into the game on the show, I knew I was getting at least three or four runs out of him. <laughs> so we're, we're getting to base this on pretty much anything we want, because if that's the case, I'm going Ramon, uh, Ramon Ortiz all the way, just because I hate Nate. I used to chant that with my friends when we would watch him and came in, I hate Nate. I don't know why, I just didn't like the look of him. This also says Ramon Ortiz was six foot tall. Yeah, he was a, he was a little guy. Yeah, but I feel like six foot's kind of a lot for him, right? You're not thinking of Russ Ortiz, are you? No, no. <laughs> that and, of course, Ramon Ortiz played for my Cubbies, so I'll give the nod there. Right, he was a little shrunny guy. Played for the Cubs, played for yeah. the Angels. Angels, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Had some time with the Nationals in there as well. Yeah, I guess, uh, so I guess we're all going to Ramon Ortiz. Ramon Ortiz, that's who I got. That's all right. Let's see. Uh, you know what? I don't know who the second guy is, but we're going to do it. <laughs> we're going Xavier Needy versus George Watkins. Now, is it Xavier Needy or is it Xavier Needy, like Xavier University? I think it's like Professor X. Well, if it's like Professor X, i got to go Xavier Needy. I actually liked his time with uh, with the Pittsburgh Pirates. The off season that he had with the Pirates that he played well, and then he yeah, that was my favorite my favorite part of Xavier Nady's career. I'm gonna go with the other guy only for the fact that when he signed with the Yankees, I thought he was gonna be like the next big thing that he was gonna get him over the hump, and he got hurt like two months into the year. So I'm gonna when, go with George Watkins. When in the last 15 years have the Yankees needed a player to get over the hump? Yeah, it sounds pretty bad for a team with a payroll of two hundred million. <laughs> but hmm, I really want to know who George Watkins is. I shouldn't have the tiebreaker. He's he sounds like he should be one of our founding presidents. He's got more hits. He's got more everything, right? A little less home runs, more hits. Interesting. Because this page looks like it has crashed. Pretty sweet. <laughs> so, uh, I guess we're going Xavier and Haiti. Hey, X Men coming. So, wait, are we talking about the George Watkins that played for the Cardinals, Phillies, Giants, and Dodgers from 1930 to 1936? The one and only. <laughs> George Archibald Watkins. Oh, well, if you'd have told me. His middle name was Archibald? <laughs> it would have been a completely different story. All right. So, Xavier Nady, congratulations. Hey, look You're at better that. than some guy that we've never really heard of. <laughs> Who played in the 1930s. But he wasn't as hurt as much as Xavier Nady was. Hey, if he played dur during the Depression and didn't go to war, he's obviously a baller. <laughs> All right, the next matchup. It's a good one. Scott Baker versus Jose Valverde. Interesting. Wow. Wow. Starter versus closer, right? Yeah. This is. Apparently, wow. Scott Baker's done, right? Wow, he's, he's got 57% winning percentage. That's pretty good. He's got I a, four, that. a 4 ERA. I mean, if you're a closer and you have an ERA at three, that's not fantastic. Well, in today's baseball, that's that's almost becoming the norm, which is sad in its own right. But it's also you blow one game pretty big, and it's going to be kind of hard to put right. go well, for it. Didn't Valverde blow no saves last year, and then on opening day he blew on, on first day, right? Yeah. After uh, they landed through a great game. God, he dances like an idiot, and he's got a beer belly. i got to give it to this guy. i got to give it to Valverde. I gotta give it to Valverde because I am the Tigers in our MLB league. So, Jose Valverde got Cy Young votes last year. You give it to him. Point two. Though actually, Scott Baker's war is higher. I give Scott Baker credit for playing with the Twins and not just saying, "Why am I playing for the Twins?" 
Because you're wearing that hat, obviously. Well, he wanted he wanted Joe Maurer to catch him. I feel like Scott Baker was a lot better than he was. I guess we're going Jose Valverde. Jose Valverde. Booyah. I don't know Ted Abernathy or Al Worthington. Ooh. Oh, guys, I think we may have just got our biggest showdown yet. The question is, where do I share the screen? <laughs> Andy Chavez or Eric Kinski? Oh, Who boy. you got? <laughs> wow. Oh, the match of the Titans right here. Wow, Eric Kinski. Let me tell you. Let me ask you a question. How long do you really need me to hold the screen up? Why does Eric Kinski have 61 stolen bases and Andy Chavez has 98? <laughs> <laughs> That's fascinating. <laughs> wow, 61. No, the, the bigger number is 98. How does he almost have triple digits? 135 pinch hit home runs is pretty good. He's never started a day in his life. So. <laughs> he's also a th I mean, he's a multi-position guy. For this, I, I give the H to Hinsky. Just as a player, in terms of who I would want on my team, not only has that guy got a good amount of power, but he also has the ability to play multiple positions. So I give it to him. You go back, where if you go ahead 20 years from now, Andy Chavez will be remembered and not Eric Hinsky for his catch against the Cardinals. Yeah, Eric Hinsky hit a home run sometime, right? That was important? No. <laughs> Never. Apparently never. Didn't he play for the Blue Jays for like five years? Yeah. Well, that answers your question. I go also, 235. Uh, I'm very questionable about the whole baseball reference weight thing. <laughs> yeah. Who was the guy that cracked us up, Jeff? Was that, uh... That wasn't Eric Hinsky, right? Matt Stairs? That was Matt Stairs. Yeah. Oh, dude, <sighs> don't... Hey, as somebody who lived in Milwaukee for a good amount of time, you don't be talking bad about Matt Stairs. No, we were playing... Was this during the 24 hours of gaming? Yeah. Okay. yeah. We, were, we were playing MLB and it must like 3 a.m. 3 in the morning. Yeah. Matt Stairs comes to pinch hit, <laughs> like steps out of the dugout, tips his little hat to show his bald head shining, <laughs> and we lost it at uh -huh. 3 in the morning. <laughs> well, at 3 in the morning, there's not much funnier than Matt Stairs' bald head. <laughs> I'm going to give it to Hinsky because I know he's still on the Braves. I don't know if Chavez is still in the league. Last I think he was in the Tigers organization, but I have to go with Hinsky as well. Though in MLB, he hasn't gotten any hits from me in all the times he pinched it. Pinch hit. Pretty sure he's on the brace. Yeah, he is. Oh, this is going to be a tough one for Jeff. Because I know he's, uh, well, uh, Zach, do you want to say? Because I know you picked Hinsky, so it's all good. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's going to be a tough one. I'm telling you, Jeff, ready? Yeah. Oh, Mike snap. Cameron oh, or Mickey Tettleton. Oh, man. But the question is, how long should I leave the screen up? Because you guys can only see it when I have it like this, right? Just long enough for me to be able to pull it up myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. I mean, Tettleton had a few good years where it's like, man, he was like the premier switching catcher, but... He did have that sweet batting stance, too. True. I mean, didn't didn't Cameron have some really big seasons a couple of years ago, though? For the Brewers? He, re he resurrected his career with the Brewers before he went back out to San Diego, I thought. Was either one of them in the Mitchell Report? I think so. No, I don't think Cameron was mentioned, so. Cameron does have three gold gloves. I was going to say, he's a pretty good center fielder. Uh, I'm going to go with Cameron. I mean, Tellton, he's kind of like one of those cult type, you know, guys, but... I mean, but Cameron. here's the thing. His nickname was Fruit Loops. Hmm. Well, look, that outweighs pretty much any statistic you could throw at me. I think it's got to be Cameron, because he's got him in batting average by nine points. He's got him in home runs by, like, 30 homers, which I'm pretty surprised. And he's got him by stolen bases by about 260. Well, there's that. I think it's got to be Mike Cameron. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Buster Brown or John Thompson? And I'm not even kidding about Buster Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Skip that one. Ugh. You guys want to talk about some mediocre relief pitchers? 
Mike Adams versus Jamie, not Jarrett, Wright. <laughs> oh, boy. I wish it was Jarrett Wright, because I saw him pitch in high school. Jamie Wright. Uh, God, he's 87 and 123. Wow. Jamie Wright is still pitching? <sighs> yeah, he's on the Dodgers. Wasn't Adams pretty highly coveted in that Orioles trade last year to the Rangers and then kind of really didn't do anything? I think so. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to give it to Jamie Wright because he got some pitching since 96. Yeah, I'm with Jamie Wright there, too. He was drafted there. He came up three years after you're drafted, and that's that's pretty quick for a guy that's, you know, stayed around as long as him, too. Don't get me wrong. The right, Adams is, the right answer is Adams, but I think I'm picking Jamie Wright. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to go with Adams. He had some pretty good years in San Diego, and times were pretty sparse in San Diego. Well, hey, it's easy to be good in San Diego when no one's trying to play against you. Well, you got to see Bell back. Yeah. He got a big uh, thing, big contract. Worked that well for him? Yep. Ooh. All right, the next one is... It would help if I click on it correctly... I can't be watching this. This is just a pilot test kind of thing. So, uh, <laughs> not gonna. Well, I'm not gonna promise that the actual version is gonna be any better. <laughs> Wish you could almost prearrange the deck instead of having it. You know. Right. Well, what I did was uh, I do have like ten of them saved. I was gonna say you, do, you can find some randoms. Do like ten. Just do screenshots. That's what I have. I have that saved. If we wanted to try that. Yeah, we're good. It's a pilot. Yeah. So now you got Yunel Escobar, not Pumpkin Escobar, versus Carlos Ruiz. Chooch? Oh, man. The Chooch is killing it this year. I'm pretty surprised that Yunel Escobar has played more games on him. Just saying. Dude, Chooch is 5'10", 205. That's impressive. Dude, Chooch has five triples, and Yunel Escobar only has eight. Triples no. are no huh? triples are one of those things. Nobody goes up and is like, man, he's really good at hitting triples. Triples are complete luck. Okay, I I just I just sealed my thing. In 2010, Chooch finished 17th in the MVP voting. In 2011, he finished 23rd. So the fact that he got any MVP votes, I'm giving it to Chooch. I don't understand how he gets an MVP vote. He just catches the ball from uh, wow, my video kind of stuff. Well, he All finished. Right, back. <laughs> he finished one spot ahead of Giancarlo Stanton. So, right, but all he was doing was catching like three potential Cy Young Award winners. He had 283, not bad. Zach, you want to chime in? You still do this? Um, you know, I'm I'm trying to go back and forth here, because Chooch not only does Chooch has an awesome, have an awesome name, but he's been good enough where his his team, like, he's only, he's only played for the Phillies, right? I'm not wrong on that, right? That's correct, yeah. to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, yeah he's, he's only played for the Phillies, whereas Yanel has bounced around a little bit to, I think, two or three teams. On that alone, because I am not well-versed in either of these guys, I'll be the first to admit, I'll go with Chooch because of the cool name and also because if you're important enough to stick around for six years in a place like Philadelphia where they've had a really, really great run, I'm all about it. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to agree with you. And just for your knowledge, he also played third base in the 2011 season. Did he? Yeah. Good man. Another catcher infielder choice is gonna be a tough one, though not really. Well, you never know. <laughs> Edwin Encarnacion versus Kurt Suzuki. If you base it off this season alone, it's Edwin Encarnacion because he's like the MVP of the American League. <laughs> I mean, the guy's absolutely killing it, but how can you not like what Sir Kurt Suzuki has done for the Mariners, right? I feel like Kurt Suzuki is on his way back to Japan. Why did I say Mariners when I meant A's? A's. He's on the because A's you're, th you're thinking of Kenji Jojima. You know why? Because the answer is Edwin Encarnacion. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not biased toward Japanese catchers. I just don't know what team they play for. 
He's not, wait, we got to remember, he's not even Japanese, he's Hawaiian. Yeah. <laughs> he went to USC, didn't he? Uh, California State University Fullerton. Yes, he, he is a Titan. He is a Fullerton Titan. Mm. Along with uh, that Conjures guy from the Angels. Hank Conger? Who's also obnoxious. He also has the whitest name, and he's some sort of Asian. Yeah, and he's <laughs> obnoxious. Hmm. I'm giving it to Edwin. Yeah, Edwin's turned the ball off the cover of it. Yeah, I, I, I want to go Kurt Suzuki just because I like him. I like watching him as a player, but... Edwin's the the right choice, if only because of this uh, this season. All right. This guy's named Jim O'Toole, so we're not going to do his. Oh, see, this is another one of those crazy ones. A toss up between Rick Ankeel and Giancarlo Stanton. All right, Rick Ankeel, <laughs> the outfielder or the pitcher. Oh, just, it, it, count, it says center field slash P. Oh, boy. So we're just talking, I mean, the player, the player as a whole. Yes. Well, do you, know, you know how I feel. I was going to say, you got a really? W in the major leagues, and you hit a home run, I can't vote against you. So, wait, so if it was Giovanni Gallardo against Barry Bonds, you'd take Giovanni Gallardo? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's 13 and 10 in his career as a pitcher. It's a winning record right there. Yeah, 11 and 7 in his one you know real season. I mean, apparently huge dick. I'm sorry. Apparently he's a huge dick. Not he has one. He <laughs> is one. Go read uh, Three Nights in August. Look, but here's the thing. All right, on uh, from an insider quote unquote perspective, Tony La Russa, not exactly a nice man either. I'm not going to hold that against him. Tony La Russa, in terms of what I've experienced, is the biggest D-bag in all of sports. Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to say, if it was Mike Stanton, I would go with Mike, but the fact that he's changed it to Giancarlo is just... <laughs> yeah. You're <laughs> out. You're out. Sorry. And now, if it was Mike Stanton, the pitcher, versus Rick Ankiel, the pitcher, it'd be a toss-up. Well, could, could we have Mike Stanton, the pitcher, versus Giancarlo Stanton, the player? See, I thought he was his son, and then I realized he's not his son. No. <laughs> Giancarlo's been playing well in Miami this year, though. I mean, he's, he's got some pop in his bat still. He's hit some of the furthest home runs this season. Huh. He, made, he made that Bochinko ball-looking thing out in the outfield go crazy a couple times. <laughs> Look, i got to give it to Rick Ankeel only because... He would throw Giancarlo Stanton out at home on a sack fly. True. Every day of the week. Very true. Very true. And he'd get a standing O even if Stanton didn't try to go home. So you got to give him credit for that. So what do you guys say? Uh, I'm going uh, in Keel. Yeah, in Keel. Yeah. I tricked you guys. Oh, uh, man. If I knew who John Hiller was. <laughs> You'd be all about it. Well, it was against Jimmy Key. Mm. Which you can't vote against Jimmy Key unless it's uh, against Jim Abbott. This is going to be a hard one for Zach Franklin Gutierrez versus Corey Hart. Not the creator of the heart attack, Corey Hart. The outfielder for the Brewers. Oh, God. Okay, just uh, now remind me, is this... A person or a player? Like, am I judging him as for his work on the field? On the field, yes. Oh. I lost Barry Bonds. Then we can judge him by whatever we want. <laughs> uh, okay. Franklin Gutierrez, I enjoy watching as a player. He's got a gold glove, all right? Corey Hart, side note, dumbest human being I've ever met in my entire life. And that's not a lie. He really is the dumbest person I've ever met in my entire life. He looks but like he, he never, and I mean never, gets a clutch hit. Not once in his entire career has the man hit a ball when he needed to and when his team needed him to. And for that reason, and that reason alone, I go Franklin Gutierrez. Well, based on that rule, I could pick A-Rod every day. I would, I would have to pick the answer A-Rod, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with Corey Hart, and here's my rationale. He has two all-star appearances, which are kind of watered down now, but... Very watered down. He had the balls to declare for 
um, arbitration when he hit 285 with 26 home runs. Because he knew the Brewers needed him. Yeah, but when you hit a 285, I, that's pretty ballsy. So you're leaving the sound to me, huh? Yeah. Where is Franklin Gutierrez now? Mariners. But it says he didn't play in 2012 yet. I think it's hurt, right? Hmm. I mean, he's signed through next season. Like, he's got a contract, I think. And he's got a gold glove. I mean, he's got a nickname that I didn't know about until I just read this. Did Death you? to Flying Things. Franklin Gutierrez, folks. He is your pick. <laughs> you click. <laughs> no question asked. Well, eight people from Corey Hart's baseball reference page have liked him on Facebook. So, <laughs> that means anything. <laughs> it's Corey Hart and his mom and his dad and his six brothers and sisters, so... All right, let's see who we got up next. It is the person that Jeff thinks should win every single time. Grady Sizemore versus Placido Polanco. <laughs> and he let me just say, he got good for it. Uh, I was going to say, you, you guys can hash this out. You know my vote. Like, let me do a little heads up for people that do this at home. These yellow boxes, half the time are a lie. You mean the fact that Grady Sizemore has 948 hits and Placido Blanco has 2,000? Why is Grady Sizemore highlighted in yellow? Great question. Right. Very much so. Uh, hmm. I go Placido Blanco. That's a tough one. I lost my camera again. <laughs> I mean, you know, 2,000, 2000 hits. There we go. 2,000 hits, really. 2,000 hits, almost 1,000 runs. He's got a 300 career batting average. You all do this, and then we'll get to me, and I'll go ahead and win you over. Look, I... Well, I know you're going to say Grady Sizemore, so... No, but you don't know why. I got my rationale will convince <laughs> anybody. Because he's supposed to be good. <laughs> One. His name is actually Gradius and not Grady. Okay. He was involved in maybe the greatest trade of all time in which he was on the Expos, he was sent to the Indians with Cliff Lee, Brandon Phillips, and Lee Stevens for Bartolo Colon. Yeah, you know why? Because Bartolo Colon is one of the greatest pitchers of all time. We already picked him over a Cy Young winner last couple years. Or Omar Minaya is a complete moron. Either one, you be the judge. And we've just lost all of the Mets fans that are watching this. <laughs> I'll say this, I like oh, Omar Minaya. Asado Polanco. That. Grady Sizemore killed him? <laughs> I think Grady Sizemore... He went against Grady Sizemore and got killed. No, man. I was, what I was trying to say was... What the hell just happened? I don't know. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. That's all that matters. Wait, is Grady Sizemore related to Scott Sizemore? I wish he was related to Tom Sizemore, the actor, but he's not. Who the hell is Tom Sizemore? What? The guy with the hose. <laughs> From the movie Heat? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Grady Sizemore, Heart and Hustle Award winner, 2008. Part of the 30-30 club. Need I go on? Mm. Dude, Placido Polanco is such a team player. That's the only thing. He swings like a 28 bat. Yeah, but he's only like 5'10". So he's, what? He's got 2,000 hits. What does it matter what he swings? It was 2,000 dribblers. <laughs> I, yeah. It doesn't <laughs> matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. 2,000 infield singles. Whatever yeah. works, dude. God damn. Three gold gloves. They flip flop on the All Star appearances. Hold on. And in 2009, he finished 25th in the MVP voting while winning a gold glove. Placido Polanco, people. I'm going to have to give it a Placido Polanco. No offense, Jeff. If Grady Sizemore against pretty much anybody else in the history of baseball, hey. it would be Grady Sizemore. Hey. I understand. Yeah. I mean, know who Gene Gerber is? Because I sure in hell don't. <laughs> oh. Nice. Now we get some uh, some Red Sox-Yankees rivalry time going on. Hideki Matsui oh. versus D-Pity Dustin Pedroia. You know what? Honestly, this is the first one that has actually been a really, really close one and a really good matchup. Maybe outside of Tim Lincecum and Bartolo Colon. Let me tell you why it's not a close one. 
Dustin Pedroia can't hit the up and in fastball, as we've learned from the MLB 08 commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go, Matsui. You're going against a guy with an MVP award and a rookie of the year. Yeah, and uh, multiple his rings. Name's not Godzilla. It's no. neither Sadeki Matsui. It's, it's Gojira for one, and two, it doesn't apply in America. I, I mean, honestly, I hate the Red Sox. This goes against everything I stand for, but he's a 304 career hitter with an MVP. He's pretty tough. He's tough as nails. Don't get me wrong, Matsui's clutch. He's got more World Series, but... And how many, how many video games has Hideki Matsui been the cover boy of? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't buy the Japanese game while he was still there. You know what I'm saying. They only put, like, ten guys on the cover. Which I don't have here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just kidding. Dustin Madrid. Yeah, this doesn't include <laughs> Japanese stuff, does it? Uh, Shane McMahon versus Randy Myers? No. <laughs> Ooh, this might be another classic. Can you give me some Ken Caminiti, please? Dude, even better. Even be- the only person better than Ken Caminiti is Bruce Chen Caminiti and Tommaso Marte. <laughs> Maybe the two worst left-handed pitchers in my generation. <laughs> Hey, Bruce Chen, still going. Is he really? Yeah. He's, he's tearing up, I think. On he's on the, the only man that may throw softer than Jamie Moyer. Hey, but <laughs> Jamie Moyer gets it past people. That's all that matters. I'm telling you, I don't care how it looks. I don't care how it gets there. If he's still winning and he's still getting it past people, more power to him. Yeah, I'm going Bruce Chen. Not Bruce really Chen has been tossed around more than... God, he's been on every single team. He's the Asian Terry Mulholland. And yeah. you know what? That gets a vote in my book. <laughs> All right. Did you know How did he have 64 wins in, like, 15 years? He's Panamanian. That he is. He's not Asian. So... Not that that means anything, but... <laughs> that changes my vote completely. Who, 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 oh, Damaso Demo- Marte? Yep. Oh, God. No. Yeah, Chen. This guy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, no, no. Especially the Yankees. He did. Let me tell you why I would think about voting for Marte. When I was at a game, I was watching BP, and he ran into, like, some third-string catcher that was, like, 6'5", and just, like, bounced off him. And that's why you would vote for him? Yeah. That was a Marte with almost a full-point ERA lower over his career. Yeah, but Bruce Chen has been doing it. 14 years. If you're that bad and you can stick around for that long... Domaso Marte is only two years off of that. Well, here's the thing. Domaso Marte is listed at 37, but we know he's really 41. (laughs) That's true. That's true. Doing it at a... uh, I gotta give it to Chen because Marte is supposed to be a lefty specialist and he can't get anybody out. Right now, Bruce Chen's getting everybody out. Except for the six runs that score against him every game, but... But if you don't count those... All right, next up. And this one's probably a pretty easy one. Latroy Hawkins. <laughs> I can't even laugh at that thing. Let me tell you why... Price. Hold on, let me tell you why this pick is Latroy Hawkins. First off, if you were facing Latroy Hawkins, it was your favorite day of the week. So a point for that. Second off, this is the only man in baseball who one time when he was pitching for the Cubs, because you know when he warms up in the bullpen, he uses a weighted ball because he thinks that will help him. One time ran in with said weighted ball and threw that for the first pitch to the first batter he faced. That kind of stupidity gets my vote. Interesting. Uh, I definitely go David Price. Yeah, it's my question, really. <laughs> it's totally a question. You're going on the wrong criteria. Look, Latroy Hawkins has been a closer for damn near 18 years, and he has 98 saves. I don't know what the math is. That's like five a year. <laughs> <laughs> it's because he bounces around from middle setup to setup to closer. Where is he? He's not still pitching, is he? Yeah, he's active. No, we, no, no that's yeah. wrong. Look, I doubt baseball reference on players' weights, but on career <laughs> years, I believe them. By the way, uh, this might be late, but Bruce Chen, the fact that his Twitter handle is Chen Music, I switch my vote. Uh, let me tell you something about Chen Music. <laughs> Chen Music. All right, let me just log into Twitter here. I love him so much, I'm about to follow him. Follow. 
You don't have to worry. It's only 49 tweets, so we're good. <laughs> so Kurt Hawkins has made $39 million playing baseball. <laughs> he could almost ruin a uh, video game company with that kind of money. I'll say, hey, 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 oh. <laughs> almost pay off Kurt Schilling's debts. Yeah, just go up to me like, hey, Latroy, I need you to give me every dollar you've ever made, and then I'll be back to even. You know what you got to remember when you take that number? you got to take out, like, half for taxes. Yeah. Right. Because Kurt Schilling said he blew the $50 million he made in baseball when we found out he made 114 so... Yeah. Right now... By the way, did anybody play Kingdoms of Amuril, whatever? Kingdoms of Amalur, The Reckoning? Yeah. Did you play no. it? No. No? It looked pretty good, and I heard it was good. It looked like every other video game that ever came out. It's just a sim game, right? It's uh, for RPG. Yeah, like action RPG, right? Yeah. Yeah. You kill some stuff. All right. Now we finally get one where it's two big-time relief pitchers and not, like, random reliever versus random starter. Joe Nathan versus Lee Arthur Rhodes. It's Lee Arthur Rhodes, right, guys? Why did you say a big-time relief pitcher? He's got 33 saves. <laughs> Dude. Big time, as in, have you seen the diamond earrings he wears? <laughs> Big time. <laughs> it's Lee Arthur Rhodes, right? I believe so. Uh, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say Lee Arthur no, Rhodes. Arthur Lee Rhodes from Waco, Whatever. Texas. Whatever. Dude, he still is not pitching no. anymore? No, last year was... He's not signed anybody this year. Ugh. Does have a World Series ring? With who? Marlins? The Cardinals. I don't know if you've heard of them. They won not too long ago. Yeah, not bad. Who? Wait, who has that? Arthur Rhodes. God, last year he won, didn't he? Yeah. God bless. Him. He's faced five thousand batters. Well, we'll give him a, you know, an, uh, a lazy boy, not this pick. A, a lifetime achievement award. Yeah. Dude, do you remember those diamond earrings he wore? Yeah. Those were so sweet. <laughs> New slash, they were cubic zirconia. No, <laughs> diamond nexus labs grown in a test tube. Two and has a two eight five ERA. It's pretty damn good. Yeah. You know what the problem is with uh, baseball reference? What? They don't have holds on this thing. Well, I, okay, are we really debating this, people? I mean, Rhodes is a one-time All-Star. Joe Nathan finished runner-up in the Cy Young twice, was MVP votes, like five All-Star appearances. I don't know. Those earrings. <laughs> Just saying. Those earrings were sweet. <laughs> Joe Nathan. Yeah. Gotta go Joe Nathan. No, he's not doing that great this year. Uh, damn, I wish I knew who Frank Mazone was, because him versus Lionel Shield would have been a great one. Uh, what do you guys think about talking about some not really great pitchers? Let's do it. Let's make it like the penultimate. We'll we'll do the really not great, and then like we'll finish with a bang with like the worst people we could think of. Well, the worst people I could think of would probably be Jeff Francis and Rodrigo Lopez. So. <laughs> Oh. Not really saying much. Oh. They're equally bad. They're pretty terrible combined. Two, bo both of them have two shutouts. Both high four ERAs. Both under five hundred winning percentages. Uh, Jeff Francis is he still alive? Wow, Jeff Francis has given up one hundred and twenty-eight home runs in one hundred and eighty games. Got a factor in Coors Field. Right. Uh, I think Coors Field is less of a factor now than we used to think. Do you want to play MVP Baseball 2004? Because I hit nine home runs at Coors Field. Yeah. Than we used to think, which was 2004. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Jeff Francis. And hear me out. He looked awesome in the throwback Colorado Rockies hat. It's a good reason. Not gonna lie. Saying. In this game, that is a really good reason. <laughs> <sighs> Rodrigo Lopez, though. I, I go with Lopez. I saw Francis pitch one game 
was the Reds versus the Rockies, and Francis got lit. So just on that alone, I got to go with Rodrigo Lopez. And his agent is Scott Boris. So, <laughs> oh, well then, Rodrigo Lopez, yes. Correct the mundo. Uh, I don't know who those guys. Ooh, it was an alliterative one between Bob Bailey and Chris Chambliss. Ooh. Uh, all right, we can wrap it up on this one. Though, whatever you do on this one, don't let current what's going on sway your vote. Okay. Uh, Ken Caminiti. <laughs> I wish it was. Matt Kemp versus El Caballo, Carlos Lee. Ooh, Ooh that, gets, that hits him right with the brew crew right there, too. Yeah. The rude boy versus the donkey. Hmm. What's going on with Matt Kemp? Are they trying to trade him? What did I, ju- I just saw some random tweet from, like, Buster Only. He just they were uh, around. He went back on the DL, didn't he? Yeah, he went back on the DL, like, two days after he came off it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. He did break a bat... Was it over his knee in the dugout? Yeah, it was sick. If you saw that video, that was awesome. It would make Chili Davis jealous. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, Kemp, don't get me wrong, he's had some really good seasons last year. He should have been the MVP. But before that, he had 28 home runs, 26, 18, and then 10. I mean, Carlos Lee was like... So you're saying he's on the juice as much as Ryan Braun was? Wow. It's, well, look at the guy, dude. He's, you know, he's big. Braun's a scrawny little... Braun is... Incre- he's svelte. I mean, as svelte as svelte can be. Did you touch him? I actually have touched him. Not inappropriately, but I have. I'm not going to believe that. <laughs> not for a second. 450 doubles for Carlos Lee. I was going to say, give me some stats on Carlos Lee. Well, let me throw the screen back up then. Carlos Lee. I mean, he means El Caballo, so let's just start there. Hold on. Okay, if you're going to go El Caballo, Matt Kemp is called the Bison. Which, L. Bison. If his nickname was Sean, <laughs> then I'd be pretty pumped. And he would have about 800 kids. Uh, this is a tough one. Like, Matt Kemp's really good this year. Well, I mean, like, last year slash this year. Uh, Carlos Lee has had five 30 home run seasons. He's had six 100 RBI seasons. And probably about another five seasons at, like, 24, 25 home runs. And he's eaten his way out of how many positions? Like, three by now? Oh, dude, he's <laughs> he's making Miguel Cabrera look svelte himself. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, too, and this will convince you why it's Carlos Lee. Carlos Lee, the most strikeouts he has ever had in a single season is 91. All right? And that was one time. All right? Over his, what is it, like, 13-year career, he's never struck out more than 100 times. In Matt Kemp's six-year career, he striked out over 100 times four times. Yeah. Lee has 1,200 more games, and he's only struck out like 120 more times. Right. That's impressive, but do we, do we believe the weight of 270 for Carlos Lee? I think that's the most accurate one based on what he's had so far. <laughs> you think that's based on what he was at the beginning of the season or what he is now? I think that's based on what he was when he left Milwaukee. <sighs> He's made, wow, wow. Yeah, well, Carlos Lee got paid by Houston. Almost $112 million. He's making $19 million a year right now. you got to remember, too, when Carlos Lee was traded to Texas from Milwaukee in that mid-deal that brought Kevin, uh, oh, God, what was his name? Kevin Mench to oh, Milwaukee. The largest head in baseball. Yeah, brought Kevin Mench to Milwaukee, but... The other player in that deal, the player to be named later, that went that was sent down to Texas. Wait, 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 wait. All right. Is it Adrian Gonzalez? No. Damn it, I was close. <laughs> that is one Mr. Nelson Cruz, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, that's a bad thing. I'm trick. pretty sure it works in our ass. <laughs> Do we not remember the six years Carlos Lee played with the White Sox alongside Maglio Ordonez? I remember, like, the last two. I mean, he absolutely hit the cover off the ball. 24, 24, 26, 31 home runs. Hmm. Not going to lie. Don't remember any of that. None. I, I'm going with Carlos Lee. I mean, ask me this in five years and it'll probably be count, but today it's Carlos Lee. Yeah, I'm going with Carlos Lee. You guys want to do one more? Because i got a really good one. Is it Ken Caminiti? 
Almost. <laughs> There's a C in it. It's two perennial MVP candidates. Can I just get a dead player that was on the Mitchell Report so we can talk about this, please? No. All right. Last one. All right. Miguel Cabrera oh, man. versus Justin Morneau. Ugh. Pre, pre getting beamed in the head or post? <laughs> you know, got to take it off the other. They both played the same amount of years. Is that r- they oh, they both played the same amount since two thousand three? Well, Cabrera's played four hundred games more. And Miguel Cabrera has w- doubled his weight, and Monor- Monroe has kept the same. Also, it says two forty for Miguel Cabrera. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel Cabrera is a better player. That's yeah, straight and forward. Justin Murnau was supposed to be like that dual threat with him and Maurer, and just never, never materialized after unfortunate events. Yeah, he, he won an MVP. I mean, he definitely. I mean, he was a high 300 hitter before you know he got beamed. I saw him hit a ball onto Utah Street at Camden Yards. That was pretty impressive. I did go over four Miguel Cabrera last night in MLB 12. Well, what have you done for me lately, right? Mm. By the way. Uh, Camden Yards, a very nice stadium. I, I was just there. It's awesome. It Again, nice. another player who ate himself out of two positions. Three positions, right? He started at shortstop? He started at short, went to third. I think the Marlins put him on the left. Yep. And then he, and he went to first. And now, went first and now he's one of the worst third basemen in the league right now. Well, when the Marlins put him out there, that was because they just didn't care anymore. And they just said, oh. just go to the place where we put the worst player on the field. Are we going to hold his preseason drunk driving against him? Uh, didn't he tell the cop, like, he was, like, got pulled over, he had, like, open container, and they, like, tell the cop to do something? Didn't he say, like, I'm Miguel Cabrera? Possible. <laughs> you alone? Do you know who I am? No. Best DUI story. <laughs> Nothing to do with baseball. Basketball player named Quintel Woods. Pulled over by a cop. Had no driver's license. Pulled out his rookie card and said, <laughs> this is who I am. True story. You can Google it. Portland Trailblazers. Oh, man. So, yeah, Miguel Cabrera. Miguel he's going to win the Triple Crown before he's done. He doesn't have an MVP yet, though. Which is shocking. All right. Over under. 40 years old, Miguel Cabrera has a triple bypass. <sighs> and over. <a> crumb? <laughs> I'll go over just because they're going to pump him full of whatever medicine they can to keep him on the field for the ends of those contracts. Hmm. You got a long contract too, right? Yeah. Miguel Cabrera. Maybe a stupid question. Why are they just not DHing him? V Mart. Why is V Mart not catching? Alex Sevilla is way sick. And the reason why you're not DHing him is because nobody would have an eight year, $152 million DH. The Yankees have that in Alex Rodriguez. Yeah, but he plays third. No, I know. Don't be a jerk. What is what is this with this random A Rod defending? Dude, first off, A Rod is the second greatest player of all time. Oh, whoa, whoa! The first one falls under the Rick and Kill rule, so A Rod mm-hmm. is the second greatest pitcher of all, player of all time. That's just not true, but okay. Hmm. Find out next time <laughs> on who you got.